Hey guys, this is Max and today I want to review the Olympus 35RD. This is a rather inexpensive, compact, everyday camera that is well suited for street photography, traveling, but also for capturing special moments around family and friends. And my friend Jules and I, we took this camera out on a little photo walk through Munich to show you some sample photos later in the video. But let me try to give you some context first. So we're talking about a camera from the 1970s that features a fixed prime lens, a 40 millimeter lens that is rather fast with an aperture of 1.7 and that features automatic exposure and rangefinder focusing. And if you listen to that combination, that was very common in the 1970s and you had all sorts of camera manufacturers who offered that particular kind of camera. And there was even a kind of battle going on for the fastest prime lens and best performing prime lens. And the one for this particular camera here is certainly one of those, um, the better ones or one of the best ones. And interestingly, if you look at the camera development historically, you don't see these kinds of compact rangefinders with a fixed prime lens later on anymore because they were kind of replaced by SLRs. So with the dawn of a single lens reflex cameras where people could actually look through the lens and capture, see the image that they were actually capturing instead of as with a rangefinder, you just have, you look next to <laughs> the lens onto your subject and you have little frame indications that give you an idea of what you will probably capture. Um, the SLR was apparently superior to many people and um, many camera manufacturers just stopped producing them. Uh, today for us um, analog film shooters, they are very interesting again and um, can be had for very little money. So the camera that we're talking about today starts at around 80 euros on eBay and can goes up to about 150 euros if you have one in, if you get one in great condition that has been recently uh, cleaned, lubricated and adjusted. Um, the Olympus 35RD is the most advanced of that particular series. It had two little sisters, so to speak, the 35RC and the 35SP. And there's a great article that compares all these three cameras with its different features. And I will link to that in the description below if you're interested in that particular comparison and series. Um, but let's take a closer look at that particular camera that we have here. As I just mentioned, we have a 40 millimeter um, f1.7 fixed lens, um, a Zuiko lens that is really, really great, um, amazingly sharp. The only disadvantage is that it has a slight corner fall off when shot wide open. Um, so a kind of typical problem, but not too bad. And maybe that it only focuses up to 0.85 meters. So not really well suited for um, really close, getting close to your subject. The camera is also characterized by a really quiet leaf shutter that simply sounds beautiful and that of course makes this camera well suited for street photography. Uh, the shutter speeds run from half a second up to one five hundredths of a second and of course you have a bulb mode as well. The ISO can be set between 25 and up to only 800 and that is a little bit unfortunate um, because as you know many street photographers out there they prefer to do zone focusing and push their film up to let's say 1600, a Kodak Tri-X at 1600 or an HP5 film um, that work great for strong contrast street photography and you couldn't do that with that camera setting your ISO to 1600 and then benefit from the automatic exposure. And speaking of automatic exposure, that is the most important feature of that camera that you do have an automatic setting that you basically can, the, work, the way it works with this camera is that you would usually set your aperture to A, meaning automatic, and then only select your shutter speed on the lens itself. Um, as I said, between one five hundredths of a second or half a second. And then when half pressing down your shutter, you would get an indication of which um, aperture the camera would select. And what is interesting and which some people might like and others won't at all, <laughs> is that the camera does not let you take a shot if it would potentially underexpose it. 
So if you said, if you're in a dark situation and you set your shutter speed to one five hundredths of a second, for example, and you press down the shutter halfway, and it would basically show, the indication would show you, oh, it maxes out, the 1.7 aperture is not enough, is not enough to get in enough light um, to expose your film correctly it simply would not take the shot and you would have it would the camera would force you to change your shutter speed first to something let's say one um, sixties of a second in a darker situation and with an ISO 400 film or so and then it would work and actually take the shot ensuring that uh, you don't underexpose your film and then what is also interesting about this camera if that is a problem to you you can use it manually so you can instead just choose your aperture yourself and your shutter speed and use it like you would use any Leica, for example, um, doing all the settings yourself on that camera. The only disadvantage here is that you don't have a light meter anymore. So the light meter functionality only works in that automatic mode uh, and you don't get any suggestions uh, regarding um, your preferred aperture, so to speak, um, or a suggestion for a better shutter speed when you choose to operate it on manual, in manual mode. What is also interesting about this camera is the really bright viewfinder with its rather large rangefinder patch that makes it very easy to focus that camera quickly and correctly. And just as a little anecdote, I, we, we took this camera along on a little shoot um, that we had last year and that we also made a video about a story behind the shoot. Uh, we called it Modern Nature and my girlfriend went along and she <laughs> just briefly took a couple of shots using the Olympus 35 RD and immediately said, wow, this is so simple. This is so easy to focus. It's easier to focus than your Leica M6. <laughs> and I was like, wow, um, that's quite the statement. And in many ways, she's right. Uh, this is really a, a nice, really bright viewfinder and a great rangefinder patch. And during our test, Jules and I never had problem, even problems focusing that camera, even when we had backlight situations or something like that. Um, it was always clearly visible and easy to focus. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the camera can be had for um, starting around 80 euros and going up to 150 euros. Jules and I would both recommend to get one that has been recently CL8, so cleaned, lubricated and adjusted, or having that done if you get one that um, someone found in the basement or something like that. And one primary reason for that is that the viewfinder, the rangefinder viewfinder makes all the difference using such a camera. And what I also read online and which apparently holds true is that back then in the 70s, these cameras were not sealed so well. So all those um, viewfinders are kind of prone to haze and fog and dust and so forth. And it makes all the difference having it cleaned and um, uh, adjusted and, and so forth. And this particular model that we have here was actually uh, bought by Jules. So it's his camera, he owns it and was freshly serviced by an uh, official Olympus, a professional Olympus technician who had done that all basically his entire career. And what is interesting, he not only cleaned it and adjusted the rangefinder and things like that, but he also adjusted the voltage of the uh, light meter battery. Um, and that is interesting because originally uh, the voltage is 1.35 uh, supporting older uh, mercury batteries that are, have been outlawed by now. And what most people use by now are the 1.5 volt um, LR44 batteries that most of you might know if you uh, own some kind of SLR or even a Leica M6, for example. They all take these batteries, and uh, or two of them in many cases. And you can actually use these batteries uh, just like that with that particular camera, but you might risk um, having your light meter a little bit off because the voltage is not completely correct. So it might not even be a stop, but if it's important and you're shooting slide film or something like that, um, you better get it adjusted to the correct voltage. And if you look at the market, you see many um, people mentioning that in their eBay comments. Um, I'm talking a lot about the market here and eBay. Um, I should also mention that this is a rather rare camera, so it's not easy to to purchase it. 
So as I mentioned in the introduction, Jules and I took this camera out on a little photo walk. Um, we did that uh, during one of the first days of the year. So we had still some fireworks leftovers lying around in the city and also took some photographs of that. Besides that, of course, we just took images of typical Munich buildings and things like that. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of the um, photo walk footage that we took and also most importantly some of these sample images to give you a better idea of the lens quality.
So to sum it up, my friend Jules and I, we both thought that this camera handles really well. It's a lot of fun going out there and shooting with it. It is the kind of camera that actually encourages you to go out and shoot. Um, you might know that feeling. If you have certain cameras sitting around at home and you, you look at them, you feel, okay, like you want to just grab it and go out and take a couple of images. And this is definitely one of these cameras. Um, as mentioned before, what I really enjoy is using the focusing, the rangefinder focusing mechanism on this camera. And as mentioned before, that it sometimes does not let you take a shot if you potentially underexpose it by one or two stops is really a feature that is up to debate for me. <laughs> I, I don't need that so much, um, but I can understand that they created that feature for that kind of consumer camera. And as mentioned before, you can always transition into the manual mode and do that instead. Um, what I also want to mention is the design of this camera because I think it's really beautiful. It's this kind of 70s design that draws people's attention. It looks a little bit vintage, but not too much. It's very clean, this metallic look and everything. Everything is in its place. So you really have a design that is, for, that is created around the functionality of this camera. And I personally really like that. There's not, no, much, no clutter on there, no additional features that would make it complicated or anything like that. So you get a really nice, compact, clean camera for everyday use for taking a to work or to your work, to your way to work or something like that, to be around family and friends and take some images with an unobtrusive, rather inexpensive camera. So um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, this little camera review. Please um, leave your comments in the comment section below and let us know what you think about this camera review and also what we could improve in the future. Um, if you want to see more videos like that, please uh, subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you like this video, please also remember to like it and maybe even share it with your friends. So um, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.